All right. Guess how dead this game is. I spoke with a very well-versed gamer, tabletop gamer, about this game, and he's like, oh, this was the one that was for the Xbox 360? <laughs> yeah. And if you go online looking for miniatures versions of this game, people will talk about the clicks. I mean, it's the only thing I'll find subject matter for on YouTube is the clicks game. So no one on YouTube has discussed the actual original miniatures game that I'm going to be talking about right now. That's how dead this game is. This is nothing other than Crimson Skies. Conceived in a late night fever dream as the airborne counterpart to Battletech, Crimson Skies was created, I do believe it was late in 1999, and ran for the very short time period the rest of FOFSA's was alive. So up until 2001. It tried its hardest while it was under FOFSA's banner. And, well, let's just say this. I'm just going to jump right into it. Crimson Skies is more difficult than Battletech. Yes, it is actually physically possible. Then again, Battletech, if you ask me, is a medium difficulty game that isn't actually all that hard. Crimson Skies has a bunch of things involved in it that make it definitely a difficult game. Do you like templates? I hope you like templates because they're all over this game. I have the original box set here. No, this is not my original box set. I decided to go out and buy a copy from someone. This is the box. We're going to kind of unbox it and I'll show you exactly what I got in this box set. It's not the strongest of cardstock. It's that standard craft cardstock you expect most boxes to be made out of. Whoa. Comes with a single D10. I don't know if this is the original one it came with or if this is one that the collector that I bought this from just had it along. So I don't know. In any case, one D10 is not going to be enough for me. I plan on running a squadron worth of steampunk flavored dice. So there you go. And inside the box, we have these little plastic standees. I'll explain that in a second. Put them up there. And then we have the actual rule book, a guide to all the aircraft, a guide to the personalities in this game. Yes, that's a thing. And then we have our first template. This is the shooting template. When you do damage, you do damage to the boxes on the grid that represents your aircraft using this template. It did actually come with the Aviators Club catalog for people who wanted to buy aviators jackets or aviators glasses. Not a bad idea. And then of course it's fun to see the original FOFSA mail order form. A lot of Battletech stuff. It only has three things for Crimson Skies, as you would expect. And then of course you have a box of record sheets and templates. This is what you play the game with. This is what your aircraft looks like. And it has a turn counter, which is more useful than you'd think. It's, like I say, it's more complex than Battletech. We'll get to that in a second. Also, you don't just move normally in this game. Let me show you. And this is the movement template. Yeah, it's probably a good idea to photocopy quite a few of these before the beginning of each game. So you can have for your aircraft, okay, so I went forward, and then I turned, and then I turned, and then I tried to turn here but there's no way to turn that way right so you kind of have to deacon around with your choice of hex to determine where you're going to move then you write down that movement in secret then you reveal it all at once <laughs> Battletech is so much easier than this game this game has plotted hidden movement and unlike Battletech where your damage is resolved all at once not in Crimson Skies in Crimson Skies you take initiative turn order based on I think it's your uh so your quick draw skill, your quick draw skill, and that determines who shoot who first. You can shoot someone out of the air before they shoot you out of the air. It can happen in Crimson Skies. And of course, on the very back, they have a copy of the damage template. So there's the record sheets and templates. It comes with three maps. These maps, I'm not going to unfold them for you, but I will tell you their full specs. There's skies on one side and terrain on the other one. These hexes in a ba Battletech map, they're not convertible. 
The Battletech map is 1.25 inches. This is 1.75 inches or 1 3 quarter inches, almost 2 inches. If you get hex maps from some place that are 2 inches hex, that'll work just fine because it's just a big it's a big area. Your aircraft kind of fits inside the hex and the, the base of your aircraft doesn't ever fill up the entire hex, unlike in Battletech. So there's that. Then what people usually played with, although I have no interest in this, the little paper cutouts, you get the mix with the standees to make your aircraft. I'll probably leave these languishing at the bottom of my box forever, since I do have, and I do enjoy, the miniatures aspect of this. And then the miniatures also are, if you ask me, they're they're nice. They're, they're strangely scaled. <laughs> And some of them are a little bit delicate in parts that I wish they weren't delicate in. But for the most part, they make miniatures for this game. So, I have no problem with that. Let me go ahead and put these back. So, I'm going to talk for a little bit about the meat of this game. The rule books you get for Crimson Skies. Crimson Skies has three rule books much like you'd expect D&D to have. Except for, this is the one you really need to play. This is Fluff of the World, and this is literally Fluff of the World. I get the strong impression, looking through the rules for Crimson Skies, that it was designed to be hybrid war game slash role-playing game. I mean, they put a lot of emphasis in this book on the different personalities. It has a map of the fall in the United States, which is part of the settings. The United States fell and went into different uh, states, and you fight different states versus different states. They're quite a bit different, though. This is called Republic of Texas. That's obviously Oklahoma, but the question is, is that I've heard people say that this is supposed to be part of Texas. Wasn't included in the map, they just have it separately for some reason. Like this, they have Alabama listed as Dixie. Not too inaccurate, but this is now called the, uh, the Outer Banks Protectorate. And this, I guess, is all supposed to be Dixie as well. Although, what Missouri did to join... Dixie? I don't know. Weren't they a half-and-half half state back in the Civil War? Who knows? Yeah. Near Florida down here. Florida should be its own state. They should be crazy and nuts. But yeah, it's a different it's a different uh, map set. If you look at this really closely, you'll even see that Utah has invaded parts of uh, Wyoming and Idaho. This is what we have as far as the map of the world, and most of this book is just explaining the personalities they designed for this game. They're photoshopped together are various different photos they took. You can tell. They dressed up and took photos and then photoshopped the hell out of it. But yeah, of course they've got like uh, pinup girls at the beginning and end of each of these uh, books. The Most of this part is fluff. This is the fluff book. Then you have Aircraft of North America. This one's kind of fun. It has stats for all of the different aircraft, but and it does have construction rules, so it's useful for the construction rules. I've looked at it. It's actually simpler than Battletech's. The worst part, though, is trying to translate this system onto the grids you get for blank sheets because the components may not go where you want them to. <laughs> so that's kind of a little bit awkward. Let me also describe a few things. This is the Ravenscroft Coyote. However... And this happens all throughout this book. They, they, they describe the way that it's designed, that it has an off-center, unbalanced cockpit. And I'm like, um, no, that cockpit is on the direct center line. How the cockpit makes a second hull? No, it's a flying wing. The entire damn thing is one hull. During the design phase, they must have switched out the Ravenscroft Coyote for this sucker right here. This is probably the original Coyote. But for some reason, at the last minute, they redesigned this to be the William Colt Peacemaker, and they had this be the Coyote instead. How can I tell? Well, you read. If you read the text, the text describes something that sounds more like this, you know, an unbalanced, gainly aircraft where the cockpit is opposite of the rest of the aircraft. Well, something like that. All I can say is that the art here doesn't match the description they give you in the book. So that is the fun thing about this, is you have construction rules, so you can make your own aircraft. Don't know why you'd really want to. I mean, the game is really, really dead. And if you wanted to play a air combat game, there's probably a lot of other air combat games out there that are better. You pick up Crimson Skies to play Crimson Skies. Speaking of Crimson Skies, 
This is the important book. It has everything in there, including it introduces you to the character sheet and how to roll dice and play. It has character creation, like right here, how many points you get to create your character, and the experience point table for various different fights you get into. So technically, yes, it is a role-playing style game. How to do movement. Yeah, movement is based off of, of course, hexes. But for the most part, you're going to want to use the templates. You can guide your aircraft around. Then you accumulate points of Gs from every hex you decide to actually go through in the end. And that, that determines how many Gs your aircraft has handled while maneuvering. So that's why the movement template is important. It gives you Gs as well as it allows you to kind of pre-plot your movement in secret. Much like in Battletech, you get to shoot one per uh, weapon you have. And so having tons of weapons on board makes your aircraft a DACA, DACA machine. And that's the funny thing, that the, there's only bombs, rockets, and machine guns. And the machine gun calibers, the only two that make any sense to me, are the 50 caliber and 30 caliber. But they have 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70, much in the same way that auto cannons exist in Battletech. Missiles in this game are very different. You do get difficulties to hit based on the direction you're fighting, so it's more... It does actually copy how actual air combat would have worked, so that's actually a good thing. Remember what I said about damage? This is what damage looks like. You fill it out with a template. Yes, this is how damage looks like in Crimson Skies. Now, I understand how people play the clicks version of this game, although I won't. This is complex, but you know what? I've played worse games before. It's not Starfleet Battles, we'll put that much. What else is in here? You got Calamity Jane, Zeppelins. Zeppelins are supposed to block the movement of your aircraft in this game, which I find a little bit annoying. Because if you've ever watched a movie about, or watched any, like a movie or a cartoon or anything about air combat that involves planes versus Zeppelins, you kind of want to fly over the top of the de Zeppelin and do a strafing run, right? Or you want to fly underneath it and shoot at the little cages that hang underneath the Zeppelin, right? No, no, you don't get to do this in this game. House rules are in effect. Someone, someone's got to cut those up. Where as long as you don't end your movement, you can go through it or something crap like that. This is also something I'm going to point out. Blake Aviation Security. Okay, who the hell is Blake and why does he have an effect on the FOSA universe? These guys turned Blake into a security master in Kerms and Skies. And in Battletech, he's literally responsible for destroying the known world. Who is this Blake? <laughs> Blake is... I can guarantee you, he's a real person that the designers knew. And... His influence showed up in two different, in two different games that the designers from FAFSA made. I'm going to call it right here now. Just conspiracy theory. Throw that out there and say, yeah, Blake has a presence in Crimson Skies. He has a presence in BattleTech. He has to be someone that designers know. I'm going to talk a little bit about the miniatures for crimson skies and you can tell i haven't really painted them i've just started getting them out of their boxes and getting them going they usually will come in an iron wind blister this says rel partha but it's actually from iron wind it's also misspelled you see it says a vegger instead of avenger but you'll they'll get a one to a blister and these will cost between like eight and twelve dollars nowadays you don't want to buy too many of them anyway i mean the game is designed for two planes on one side and two planes on the other so that's all you really need to play the game this is a Buccaneer. It is the closest thing I have to a finished aircraft, but it's not. It still needs a propeller in the back, and it still needs a lot of attention done to it. This is a my idea of a really good, small, fast aircraft. It still packs a big gun. I think it has two fifty calibers and one seventy caliber, so it's a pretty good weapon that way. William Colt Peacemaker. I have not finished this at all. And this is the Sikorsky Seer. Actually, a really nice plane work off the fact it's undergunned. I mean, the only thing it has going for it is it has carrying capacity and speed, so it makes for a really good border hopper. It's a coyote aircraft. If you want to get some smuggling across the border, this is probably the best way to do that. Then, if you thought this was going to not show up, whoa, ha, ha. this is a 25 year old paint job. It's not mine. A friend of mine painted up the Pumpkin One. The guy has a Halloween obsession, so. Here is his firebrand. 
I don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. Um, I'm going to play with it. I don't know if I should just leave it like it is and, and laugh at it a little bit, or if I should take the colors he was using and repaint it so it looks more like an aircraft that, you know, has the pumpkin color scheme, but, you know, it just, you know, pattern out more. It's like he painted individual panels. Usually uh, a paint scheme would cover the entire aircraft. The instances in which the paint wouldn't is if it was a... Uh, they, they primed over or went over a certain spot with uh, the paint, or if they were just smearing paint to blot out the, the silver. With a few exceptions, they mostly look really awkward and dorky. They're not even really well designed as far as experimental aircraft are concerned. Like, this thing's going to have buffeting from the engine here. Very tiny propeller, first of all. I would have spaced out those. Uh, you probably have the pods here and have the actual running booms back from here so you have more propeller space. This thing's going to buff it left and right. I mean, it's just going to, it's going to be waffling from the, the blast of the propeller all the time. Unless it's secretly a tractor. <laughs> that could be a fun thing if it was actually a tractor. If it was secretly a tractor, it would fly backwards like this. What can I say? <laughs> These things are, uh, they're not designed to be super accurate. They're designed to be fun. Crimson Skies is definitely a dick around game designed by people who don't really know a thing about air combat, but really like the idea of, you know, flying around and shooting people. So there we have it. Crimson Skies in all of its glory. Yeah, it's not even known anymore. That's sad. That's very sad. And I can imagine why, though, because this game has a bunch of really old ideas about how to design a miniature game in, in a 1999 miniatures game. And with the making it a composite thing where it's half role-playing and half miniature game kind of does get rid of that problem a little bit in that you can actually put more detail into your planes since they're characters as opposed to wargaming pieces. I don't know. It, it just... Uh, I'm a fan of air combat games. I honestly think most other air combat games out there, with the exception of Air War, are better than Crimson Skies. So I wouldn't recommend picking it up, actually. It's a dead game. It kind of deserves its little grave in the Fafsa graveyard. And if you ever come across it and play it, so be it. But I don't recommend going out of your way to get this game. It's, it's clunky. It's... I mean, it's based off of grids and charts and templates. I mean, they probably could have reworked it so it wasn't, but then again, that's probably what the uh, Clicks game was for. Yes, I said that. I'm not going to care, though. This is Crimson Skies. It is definitely a dead game, since other gamers I know of, with the exception of one, perhaps, are not playing this. Should you ever play Crimson Skies? Whatever you do, don't pair up the beeper rockets and the seeker rockets one-to-one. -one. No, 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 no. You don't want to do that. <laughs> but in any case, uh, thank you for watching my video, and have a great rest of your day.